Everybody, how's it? Aloha. Okay, Radiohead, Paranoid Android. Very mucho requestos for this song from Radiohead, of which I have become a tremendous fan of. I really have. Uh, the, the journey that you guys have sent me on with your requests has woven me through a probably, I, I don't know if it's some of Radiohead's best cuts, but they got so much out there that I really love. I'm, I'm already kind of slanted. I'm a little biased already. I'm really kind of excited because I know what I'm going to hear. Uh, it's got to be just as cool. There hasn't been one radio... I can't even finish my sentences. There hasn't been one Radiohead song that I haven't been completely amazed by performance, arrangement, and composition. So, Anyhow, uh, like usual, thank you so much for your support. Any ads run, you know that doesn't support my channel if you want to support my channel. And some of the things I do for the kids, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, that link will be down below. All right, guys, let's do this. Radiohead, Paranoid Android. All right. And as you can tell, I'm completely mystified by what I'm hearing. Not mystified like I'm not figuring it out, but it's just so wonderful, the layers that they have going on here. Um, I do recall how many members are in the band, but obviously when we're recording, we have the liberties of doing overdubs. Uh, the beautiful guitar pattern that's being held down, but something I wanted to, to kind of bring up is the percussion. You know, the, the kind of percussion that's in the background, the, the multiple shaker type percussions. You know, some on the right, some on the left, giving you that kind of, that kind of sauntery kind of vibe. But yet the guitar chords kind of leaves you kind of in a mystery lurch. It's kind of, you know, very mystique. Now, so we have the guitar pattern happening, the acoustic guitar pattern. And now, uh, or and then they introduce this melodic electric guitar performance on this side. Not so much a, a picking pattern that stays necessarily, you know, within within a uh, rhythmical structure, like the acoustic guitar is playing. I mean, this it's obviously playing in time, but it's a different uh, arrangement there. And it's wide open, and it's long, and it's nice. And then he comes in with his singing. I think, I think at some point in my life I'm going to have to see these guys live, if I ever get off this little island in the middle of the Pacific. And... Um, yeah, he, the, his voice is amazing, and I've only heard, what where are we, only a minute into a six-minute track. But um, one of the things that I loved is that as they got into, uh, I believe it's, maybe this is not the chorus yet. This could be kind of like, they could be working on a get us into one, turn around, bring us into an un, another one, turn around, and possibly a hook. I haven't gone far enough. But I also loved, of course, when they brought us up into the next level in the arrangements, they brought in that bass and they brought in another guitar. Very light loaded, nothing heavy, nothing, nothing to distract you, but these intricate arrangements definitely fill, um, f fill the soundscape, if you would, you know, the ambiance uh, vibe because they've got guitar here, they've got the guitar coming over here, and the bass is nice and buttery when it came in. So anyhow, let's go for some more.
You know, I can't tell whether or not um, that is a purposely placed and played drums or if it's, you know, um, maybe a set of traps just strictly for, you know, electronic drums, strictly for the recording. Uh, of course, it can be duplicated live. I just, it's, it's just, it's done really well as an arrangement, but obviously it's not a standout uh, in, in, in the mix. So it's hard for me to go, well, are they actually, is that really a snare that's actually got maybe a 1A stick or something like that? It's not quite a brush that's going on there, but you can hear the kick definitely holding down this sauntering pattern. In that second verse, we had now, it was more apparent that there was a bass line in there and it started moving a little more and lifting us. So it does seem so far that they took first section, second section, but there was a great little turnaround just instrumental that I thought for a second that something happened to the mix because I, I was expecting the vocal that came in, but they gave us a four bar turnaround to kind of reset. And I really dug that. that was, that's, that's really wonderful production dynamics taking you and weaving you through that story and bringing you in and out and doing that kind of stuff and then taking you off guard. You, you feel that, and here comes the next lyric, and oh, it's not there. So we're gonna get a set, they want to set us back up on that really super cool pattern. Okay. Gotta stop, gotta rinse on that bass. What wonderful bass playing. I'm, you know, I say this a lot of times because I love the bass. I'm not really a bass player. I can play bass, I play bass on the jingles and the commercial stuff that I do. But, um, so I have an ear for that. And all that wonderful phrasing that he's playing and these bass style melodies instead of just kind of hanging in with the obvious, which might be locking in with the chord and the kick and all that with the drums and stuff like that. I like all of, almost all of a sudden I started thinking this, this is school of John Paul Jones in the sense that treating the bass more than, than just the bottom end or a percussive ass, you know, part of an, uh, of an arrangement. And of course I think that's a band decision or, or if the, the, the lead singer, maybe he's, he's, he or somebody, whoever is, is that shot caller, um, I learned from a very famous producer by the name of Nick Vinay. We're talking Beach Boys days. He was one of my mentors. And he says, part of really good producing is saying, this is what I'd like to hear. And then letting the musicians come up with the ideas and you kind of go, oh, that works, that doesn't work and stuff. And that, that, ba those, that, that bass is great. Now, of course, did you see me almost jump out of my seat when they hit me with that crunch? That said, now we're getting into, you know, more of the rock element of the track, it seems like. And we're only halfway through, so... Um, uh, let's just keep going, but I had to just talk about the bass. have to say I love that line that I just heard on the guitar player kind of pulled us out into dissonance by using these notes that were kind of colliding with what we feel would be the correct notes in what's being played in the chord in this side um, I mean it's part of the scale but the choice of that that was killer I was dying when I heard that
What a killer passage. You know, I, I, I hate to stop it, but I got to say something about what I'm hearing here. So now they drop right into an acoustic guitar and the oohs and the ahs. But what's really cool about that is, so, okay, they've kind of changed the tempo a little bit. They, they let it kind of settle to tell this part of the story in the song. I'm kind of vaguely watching the video. I try not to watch the video because I just want to listen, but so they're changing that part of the story. But what I love is the arrangements. Um, maybe he's, maybe they're using this, or it's the part of the band, one of the members that does the string arrangements or something, the same arrangers. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm recognizing a, a little bit of a pattern there. Beautiful chord changes chorally, or even though it's only maybe three or four voices, but here's what I love. They actually have a pretty harsh sounding, kind of like a square wave synth sound that gives it just a little bit of a darkness and edginess to it. And I love how that kind of gliding through and his voice, oh my God, his voice is just absolute butter and so passionate. And I love his, um, I love his vibrato. His vibrato um, is very soothing. You know, it's not aggressive, it's not over the top. Everybody has their own vibratos that could be very different. His is just very soothing and very um, soothing. And then they get up into this next phrase. They modulated, which means they actually were in one key and did the performance and then stepped up and then continued that and then added a little, little more to that performance. I think uh, I heard another vocal arrangement come in as that, again, in its trajectory of building into maybe a big ending or something. So it looks like we're about uh, close to that, by the way. So let's uh, scooch back a bit. and. Let me see. I don't want to. I don't want to throw the bad juju. Yeah, I guess that's the end there. I love the fact. Another thing that I totally um, am all about is <clears throat> the sounds of the guitars sound really organic. And what I mean by that is, I don't know, but it just sounds like from this old composer who's your decomposer here dissecting it all <laughs> to the best of my ability. Uh, it sounds like they're really just driving through, you know. Um, you know, their head, a pedal board, and into the amps. That there isn't any uh, real post trickery going on there. That the that the musicians are actually like on this side here. He really kind of cut loose in a Hendrixy kind of vibe, the way he was playing what he was playing on this side of that end phrasing. And I just kind of imagine like I would see him on stage, as you know, working stomp pedals to get the sounds that he's getting out of that. And uh, also before before we kick back into the rock. Something else that I really loved is that there was a two phrase um, lyrical arrangement going on. So while he's singing in the pocket in a smaller voice here, one set of lyrics, there is either it's a harmony split or there's a completely different melody with another set of words happening there. So I really, really love that stuff. That reminds me of my old choral days. But here in, in pop music, you don't hear it. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Not pop music, sorry. Whew, I know some of you were about to go, mother. <laughs> in um, pop culture music, meaning of the last 50, 60 years and stuff like that, you don't really hear a lot of um, that kind of intricate work. Now, I have heard a lot of that, though, actually, my bad, in more of the bolder um, 
orchestral um, metal kind of things where there is some of that. But in this case, it was so subtle, but so powerful. Then they kicked us in for the big delivery at the end, and that's where I got back into what I was telling you, the, the sounds of the guitars. Anyhow, uh, this was a much longer one than I thought it would be. Uh, thank you so much for, um, for hanging in here that long. Uh, once again, uh, if you're still here, type in Radiohead for the win, FTW, or however you want to do it. It's always fun to see how long somebody stays all the way through. If you want to support the channel, thank you so much. Buy me a cup of coffee. That's great. The link for the cup of coffee, the link for their Spotify and merch and stuff will also be down below. So thank you guys so much. Uh, I got another uh, surprise coming for you pretty soon. Another super cool Beans uh, recycle track from a band that I've already heard. All right, guys. Take care. Aloha. Oh, all right.